Hello there and welcome to this video on servicing a humor regulator. In this video we're going to be concentrating on the regulator found in the BRK Ghost as well as the Daystate Alpha and Delta Wolf. As you can see here we've already removed the regulator from the rifle although if you require a full disassembly guide for your particular rifle a full video disassembly is available on both the Daystate and the BRK YouTube channels. To accompany the video guides there is also a full workshop manual and that can be found on both the Daystate and the BRK websites respectively. The next thing that I would like to mention is that before you take your regulator out of your rifle it is advisable to make a note of the current set point of the regulator. So on the BRK Ghost it will be an analogue gauge on the side and on the Alpha and Delta Wolves that information will be inside the information screen. And then finally, the last thing that I would like to mention before we get started is that if you need a service kit for your regulator, that is available from Humor Air directly. So the service kit contains all of the O-rings, a spare white sealing disc, as well as a small amount of silicon grease. And again, that service kit can be purchased through Humor Air. With that all said and done we can begin on the disassembly process and the first thing we're going to remove is the adjuster screw in the end here and we're going to be doing that with a flat bladed screwdriver. With the adjuster screw out what we're going to be doing is putting our finger over the end of the regulator, flipping it over and then coming through with an M4 bolt, screwing that lightly into the regulator piston then gently pulling that out from the bottom there. As you can see there, the small white sealing disc comes out on top of the regulator piston, as does all of the Belleville washers, so we have the full stack there. Before you move on, just double check inside the regulator body to make sure no Belleville washers got trapped inside there. With the regulator fully disassembled, the next thing we'll do is go through each of the O-rings and their function. So starting off with the adjuster screw, we have two O-rings on this little piece here. The one at the top stops high pressure air from leaking through these threads here. And if that has failed, you'll see a small consistent leak through this hole here. The one on the bottom stops high pressure air from bypassing through the regulator. And if this one has failed, air will be able to bypass through the regulator. So eventually, rig pressure will equalize with bottle pressure. Next up we have the two on the regulator piston, so this one at the top here and this one at the bottom. Both of these O-rings here seal off the Belleville chamber. The Belleville chamber is always bled off to atmosphere, and if either of these two O-rings have failed, air will be able to travel through into the Belleville chamber, out of this weep hole here, and through the bleed hole in the side of the block. I'll put a picture on screen now to show you where that is. But if either of these two O-rings have failed, you'll develop a small constant leak through that bleed hole. Moving on to the rig body, we have three on the rig body. This one at the top here stops high pressure air from leaking out of these threads here. And if this one has failed, air will be able to leak through the threads. Now if we take a close look at the hole in the end of the regulator, this one here, this is bled off through this hole here. So if this O-ring has failed, Air can sometimes leak through here as well. The next two on the body serve a similar purpose to the ones on the regulator piston. And these O-rings here stop air from leaking out of the weep hole in the side of the rifle. So if either of these two O-rings here have failed, air will be slowly and consistently leaking out of the bleed hole in the side of the block. Again, I'll put a picture on screen now to show you where that is. The last component is the white sealing disc, so this piece here. This piece acts as a valve between the regulator piston and the adjuster screw. It stops air from bypassing the regulator when the regulator is fully pressurized. When we take a shot, the piston deseats the white sealing disc from the adjuster screw and allows air to bypass through the regulator until the regulator reached its set point. Once the regulator reaches its set point, the piston presses the white sealing disc against the adjuster screw once more and seals off the rig, stopping air from travelling into the regulator chamber. If this white sealing disc has failed or needs to be replaced, you'll see excessive amounts of regulator creep. 
and creep can be defined as any regulator pressure increase after the regulator has reached its set point. So for example, if we have our regulator set at 90 bar and we take a shot, the regulator should reset to 90 bar and stay there. If after 10 minutes we come back and recheck the reg pressure and it's climbed up to 110 bar, that would be 20 bar of creep. In that scenario, that would either be caused by this white sealing disc here or this o-ring on the end of the adjuster screw. So both would need to be replaced in that scenario. With that all said and done, the next thing we can do is remove all of the old o-rings and get ready for the new ones to be put on. So I like to remove o-rings nice and simply. All I do is pinch the sides of the o-rings, move them off to one side, and that creates this little hump here which we can get our plastic o-ring back in, like so, so they can be removed nice and easily. If the o-rings are a little stuck in their seats, what you can do is lightly grip the o-ring, then twist the part to free the o-ring off. That's sometimes useful if the regulator hasn't been serviced in quite some time. Now all of the o-rings on these components here should come off nice and easily. Although if the regulator hasn't been serviced in quite some time, the o-rings can go hard and brittle. When that happens, you're probably not going to be able to pinch the o-rings and get them to move on their own. What you will need to do is cut them off with either a blade or a scalpel. Now at this point I want to say you need to be very very careful for both your fingers and the components that you're cutting the o-rings off. What I would recommend is taking a nice sharp scalpel blade or a razor blade, cutting through about 80% of the o-ring and then picking the o-ring off of its seat. Now again I will emphasize the need for safety when using blades and I will also say that you don't want to damage any of the sealing faces on the regulator components. The sealing faces are either side of the groove as well as the base of the groove. So just be aware of that. Luckily on this regulator the o-rings are nice and easy to remove so we don't need to cut them off. And then the last two are on the regulator piston. This last one on the regulator piston is always a little tricky to remove because of the proximity of the Belleville washers. Although what you can do is very carefully slide the Belleville washers off just to give you a little bit extra space. With that done, we can restack the Belvilles, take a good look at how the Belleville washers are stacked on the piston, then we can take them off and put them safely over to one side. With that done, that's the regulator fully disassembled and with all of the old o-rings removed. What I'm going to do now is thoroughly degrease all the components and I'm going to be doing that by just using some isopropyl alcohol and a nice soft toothbrush. So I'll get all these components cleaned up, then I'll bring you back when we come to rebuild the regulator. Right then, with that all said and done, that's all of the components fully degreased and ready to go back together. I've given everything a good blow off with my airline blower and I'm happy that everything is nice and dry and ready for new grease. All of the o-rings have been replaced and so has this white sealing disc here. Now you do get a spare sealing disc in the Humor Regulator Service Kit. However, if your one has a dimple on one side only, you can flip it over and use the other side. Both sides of the white sealing disc are usable and it is recommended to either flip it or replace it when you service your regulator. First though, what we're going to be doing is just adding a small amount of silicon grease to all of these Belleville washers here, and also pairing them. There we have it. Just a little bit of grease to each individual Belleville washer. You don't need tons on these components here, just a small amount of grease will do us. The next thing we can do is get these stacked onto the regulator piston. And as always, there is a few different stack variations depending on your regulator set pressure. So I'll put those on screen now. But there we have it. There's the stack for this particular regulator piston. 
the first set of Belleville's are cut towards the base of the piston. Then we have the next ones in alternating sets. So there we have it. The next thing we can do is add the O-rings to the respective parts, starting off with the piston. And then before the O-rings go on, I am just adding a small amount of silicon grease to each O-ring. And then the same for the regulator body. Next up, I'm just going to take a little bit more silicon grease and add that to the body of the regulator. So I'm just putting a little in with my fingers, then coming through with a cotton bud and just wiping that round. We have just fully degreased these components here, so they are bone dry. So just a little bit of grease in there. Just to make sure everything slips and slides as it's supposed to. The next thing I'm going to do is just add a tiny amount of silicon grease to the tip of the rig piston. Then I'm going to take my white sealing disc and just stick that to the top. The grease just keeps it in place while we assemble the pieces. The next thing we can do is take our rig piston and install that into the rig body, making sure that the white sealing disc doesn't get pinched between the walls of the regulator body. The next thing I'm going to do is just add a little more silicon grease to the regulator adjuster screw. And then we can get that installed into the top there. As we get this done up, what I'm doing is just putting my finger over the back of the piston and doing the adjuster screw in until I feel it come into contact with the piston. So once the piston starts to move, we know we're bottomed out and we can come out about a turn. The only other thing that I'll mention is that before you install the body into your rifle, just make sure that the piston itself is not proud of the regulator body. There we have it. At this point here, the regulator is ready to go back in your rifle, so you would install this into your rifle, get your regulator pressure set, and make sure everything was working exactly as it should. To make it a little easier to view for the video though, I am going to be using one of my regulator testers. So we'll install the regulator body into the tester, then we'll get everything hooked up. Right then, and as you can see here, we've got our regulator installed into our tester. The tester has a whip input here, so this is our high pressure air. We have a bleed screw on the side so we can simulate taking a shot. Then we have a nice accurate digital gauge on the side there. So as you can see from the gauge, the regulator is currently set to about 40 bar. So we need to adjust that up to around 90. To do that, it's nice and easy. These regulators are externally adjustable. So what we're going to be using is our flat bladed screwdriver coming into the adjuster screw here, and then adjusting the regulator up by turning the screw counterclockwise. Once we get close to our desired set rig pressure, we can take a couple shots into a nice safe backstop to cycle the regulator. I'm going to simulate doing that by just loosening this valve here. And then we can continue adjusting our regulator, so we still need to go up a little more. And there we have it, just under 90 bar. Now the regulator will settle a little lower than that. So after a few shots, everything will bed in and the regulator will set to a little lower. So there we have it, about 88 bar on that rig. I'm going to tweak it up just a little bit more. Right then. And I'm happy there, so just over 90. A couple minutes later it will settle down. And it should be set at around 90 bar. 
Now at this point I do want to mention that you can adjust these regulators up with no problem whatsoever. However you cannot go down. To go down you need to totally bleed the system. Then readjust your regulator with no pressure inside the system. So I'll give you a demonstration of that now. So once we've confirmed that there's no air inside our system, as you can see there, 0.1 bar, so no pressure in there whatsoever, we can take our adjuster screw, and then do that in clockwise, about half a turn or so. Then we can come back, repressurize our system, and then at this point we would simply need to readjust our regulator until we reached our desired pressure. And again, that would be done by turning the adjuster screw counterclockwise to increase reg pressure, clockwise to decrease reg pressure, although decreasing reg pressure cannot be done whilst there's air inside the system. Right then, so that's how to set the regulator pressure on your regulator. If you're not sure on what your regulator pressure should be, Daystate have a full list of all the set points for their regulators on the website. So if you're not sure on what your regulator should be set to, you can find that information on the Daystate chart. With that all said guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video. So thank you very much for watching, I hope it's been useful, and we'll see you in the next one.